Welcome back. And to continue talking about uh, the official visit of President Moon Jae-in, uh, President of South Korea to Egypt. Well, over the phone, uh, we have with us Dr. Mohammed Nagib Abu Zaid. He's a professor at the American University in Cairo. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, <coughs> Good morning, doctor. So I'd like, first of all, to shed the light on the significance of this visit. Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, I have to say that the uh, visit comes uh, uh, within the framework of Egypt's uh, excellent uh, diplomatic relations with all the countries in the world, particularly the, the great strengthening and fostering of these relations with the countries in the Far East and uh, Korea in particular come on top of these countries. Uh, comes in a time that the world uh, is economy is uh, in a big question mark uh, post the first and second and third wave of corona, together with a little bit of political instability here and there. Uh, but uh, thanks God, the Egyptian economy is going with a confident steps and cooperation with countries like uh, Korea uh, is one of the top items in the agenda in terms of uh, political as well as economic cooperation. Right. Uh, if I'm talking about uh, Korea, uh, I'm talking about uh, cooperation between Egypt and South Korea. And we all know that we have uh, different sectors, uh, many sectors actually, uh, that we are already have between both countries. In addition, we have many potentialities. And the relation is uh, uh, based on a win-win policy between both countries. Uh, <coughs> talking about uh, how uh, Koreans see uh, Egypt and how uh, Egypt here uh, sees is the importance of Korea, especially that the president himself talked about how Egypt is very, very important to South Korea, whether he's talking about Egypt as a gate to the uh, African continent or to the region in general. Uh, actually, excellent question, and uh, I, I will take from the question itself uh, uh, to put it in my answer to you. Uh, but at the outset, I would like to say that Korea, uh, as uh, perhaps uh, all the viewers and uh, listeners would know, uh, uh, has started its, uh, let's say, uh, uh, renaissance or its development or uh, uh, its great uh, uh, steps forward almost uh, in the 60s when Egypt started doing that post the 1952 uh, revolution. So what I'm saying is it, there is similarity in terms of timing, and we have to say that Korea have went with, uh, have done with, with more and, and uh, wider strides. Egypt was was was. Uh, uh, trying to stabilize the region and try to liberate its land and so on. So what I'm saying, there is uh, lessons learned from both uh, sides to each other and similarity in, the, in their quest to, to develop themselves. But I would also say that Egypt is important or the most important country, and here I'm talking not only as an Egyptian, but as a fact that uh, Egypt is the gate for the Arab world, the largest country in the Arab world, uh, one of the second or the largest economy in both in the Arab world and in Africa, and the gate to Africa for sure. Uh, Korean uh, leadership and Korean, Korean people uh, would like their products in this time of, of economic, uh, uh, let's say, challenges to, to, to be in Africa, and Africa is undergoing development as well. So, so uh, there is no better partner to do that other than Egypt, the, the, the human resources, the brilliant geographic situation, the expertise, and the willingness. Add to that also Egypt's uh, interest in, in being in Africa and supporting our friends and, 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 and brothers and sisters in, in, in the in, in, uh, within 54 countries of Africa. So partnership, as you adequately uh, stated it, is based on a win-win situation, and both parties should benefit from this uh, uh, partnership. One last thing I want to say, Korea is known to have a very good educational system, particularly in the uh, primary education uh, stage, and with a great sense of commitment and uh, the, the math and the physics and, and all these uh, important actions in modern education. So Egypt is also uh, undergoing uh, uh, a reform of its educational system, and that's another important angle for cooperation. 
Actually, I was just uh, also going to ask about um, the efficiency and the education and how far can we take benefit of this. For example, we have many sectors uh, or industries that uh, we are talking about when it comes to uh, Korea and Egypt, like, for example, uh, automotives, uh, talking also about electronics. And both, they have the feeding industry, which we are going to work on and we need more uh, the know-how, more efficiency. We are talking about human capital, and basically it, it is includes education starting from primary as well, because you are preparing for the future. Yes. Uh, uh, I have to say that, that the, your questions are, are, are really to the point. Yes, you are very much right. Uh, the primary education is, is not just the first stage, it's the, the stage at which the new generation is being formed during that stage. In other words, if you don't have a good primary education, no matter what you do after that, there is part that cannot be compensated or made up for. And uh, I, will, I will take part again of your question and, and talk about something truly important, which is, which is the high-skilled labor co Koreans uh, are known of. Uh, you know and the viewers know that since a number of years, the, 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 our Ministry of Education, even its name, has become Ministry of Education and, and Technical Education to emphasize how important technical education is. So the skilled labor, the training of the labor, the investment in sectors, as you mentioned, uh, related to, to, to smart industry, uh, to electronics, all require, together with the capital and the know-how, needs a very good uh, skilled labor. And that's another important venue for, for cooperation. And let's not forget that Egypt plays or has been placing the electronics and the, the IT section uh, very high since a number of years. That's why we have the smart village, among other uh, investment in Egypt. How can we uh, just, we can say, uh, provide more incentives to uh, bring more uh, foreign investments from Korea and to take benefit from this visit? Uh, well, the, 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 uh, of course, that's, that's, that's the, a prime uh, a prime, um, I would say, I don't want to call concern, a prime uh, emphasis from the government, uh, our government, to bring FDI's uh, foreign directed investment from all over the world and from Korea. But the greatest thing we're doing, <clears throat> there are two important elements that cannot be uh, uh, put aside. First thing, uh, alhamdulillah, thanks God, the stability that we have, uh, and, the, 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 uh, and, and when we look around in the world, even now in Eastern Europe and so on, we'll say, thank God we have this stability. That's the first uh, step that brings any investors or any investment into a country like Egypt. So that's the, the first thing. But the second thing to be directly directed to, to your question uh, uh, very much, which is the, 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 the infrastructure. Uh, the road that we are making, the, the, the surplus of electricity and energy in general, renewable energy, uh, uh, facilitating the process of investment itself, uh, creating the markets not only in Egypt, as you alluded to in your previous question, in Africa and in the Arab world. These are all makes it a very tempting uh, 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 steps to be taken for any investor. And definitely that will open the door for uh, much more uh, investors and, and uh, steps uh, to be taken by them to, to come to Egypt and put their factories and uh, their forms of cooperation with the Egyptian country. We always say that um, when presidents of countries exchange visits, this will have a direct impact on different sectors in both countries, if you agree with me. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> the way we cooperate in Egypt uh, uh, recently and I, and I personally admire that because I've been in, a member of the parliament for a good number of years and, uh, and these days it has been done in, in, in really more efficient way. There are the state visits, presidents to presidents, where they lay down the, the framework and they specify and pinpoint points um, and directions for cooperation. Then comes the ministerial level to follow up on that and uh, they put the executive plan with specific goals to be reached, of course, as directed by the political leadership uh, in Egypt and in Korea. Third comes the follow-up of these visits. And if you notice, most of the visits that our president has made 
uh, whether going to other country or, or welcoming uh, another presence from another country have always been followed up in six months time or one year most and so on to make sure that what has been stated and planned has turned into some kind of, of, of deliverables and some kind of ongoing project and so on. So I hope and I'm pretty confident that this is no exception, this visit, and this will follow uh, this good, effective uh, way of cooperating with other countries uh, uh, like we have been doing with, with, with many other countries before. Right. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Nagib Abu Zaid, professor at the American University in Cairo, thank you very much for joining us. And I guess with this we come to the end of our breakfast show for today. Thank you all for joining us. And of course, uh, yes, it's very, very important also to um, just, we can say that bringing nations together, uh, each nation uh, to understand the other, talking about Korea and Egypt and other countries as well. And just here, let's take a look again at the uh, Korean ambassador in Egypt, how he uh, admires and loves Egypt. Uh, and he was playing some of uh, of the uh, Egyptian uh, music. Thank you for joining us.